Hi, Year 12. For this lesson, we are looking at identifying representations in texts, which is part of our unit on representations and of popular culture texts. Now, you know that we're looking specifically at representations of Indigenous people. So today, I'm going to take you through how you would actually identify particular representations. First of all, let's have a look at our learning objective. So by the end of this little lesson, you should be able to understand how to identify different representations in popular culture texts. So first of all, let's have a look at what is a representation. So representations are something that we've been talking about quite a lot in this unit. It's actually the main focus of this unit, representations and popular culture texts. It is um, the easiest way to think about representations is to understand that a text is representing something. So we're thinking about that prefix re, which means back or again. So the way an individual, a group or an issue is shown in a text is just a version or an interpretation of the original thing. So I've also got down there a little box that just reminds you what a text is. So remember, a text is anything that we can read and make meaning from. So it could be a book, a song, a movie, news article. It can be a picture, a website, even street signs, um, styles of clothing. It is a word that we've been using um, many, many times when we talk about text. And we're looking at lots of different versions of text, popular culture text in this unit. So a representation is representing a version of something in a text. And remember, a representation is selective, okay? So it leaves out a lot of detail, leaves out as much as it does include in its representation. And a representation can be a conscious choice by the author to actually use a certain language and structures to make um, a certain statement, present something in a certain way. Or sometimes a representation is an unconscious reproduction of attitudes and beliefs and values in the world. Uh, people may not mean to have that particular attitude within their text, but it does actually come out with that particular representation due to our cultural assumptions. So how exactly do we identify representations in text? Well, we need to ask questions for the text and we also need to look for clues. So when we're asking questions when exploring a text, we need to think of things like, what is the text about? So you need to think, well, what is the issue being presented here? Who is the author and what is their purpose in presenting this text to us? How are we positioned to feel about this text? So should we accept or reject the representation of the issue being presented to us? Okay, so we need to think about that word positioning again. Authors use language and text structures to position us, to make us feel a certain way. Such as with rabbit proof pens, we're positioned to empathize with the indigenous girls. Another question you need to ask is who is being represented in the text and how are they being presented? Are they being represented in a negative way um, by using unfair language or negative language or are they being represented in a positive way? Are they stereotypes? being presented to us. And just importantly, we need to ask the text who is not being represented. So who is absent from the text and why? What is the impact of not having a particular person represented? Now, many TV shows have always come under criticize, um, criticism of not having um, particular minority groups represented in them. And um, I think that the media has moved forward quite a lot in being able to present a, a better uh, view and have lots more um, people from different cultures and different backgrounds represented. Okay, another question we need to think about is what is the dominant view um, in the text that we're looking at? Is it... Um, what we would consider mainstream dominant ideas and attitudes, 
or are there several different views being presented to us? And then the last question we would ask the text is, what responses might the audience make to these representations? Would they agree and feel good about the representations? Or are they going to be angry and feel like they have been misrepresented or it's a negative representation? The next thing we need to do when we're identifying representations in text is look for clues in the text. So I've found um, an advertisement. Well, it's actually the homepage of Tourism Australia's website for Aboriginal Australian tourism. And I have... I have just identified a number of clues in the text to try and help us determine whether it is actually a positive or a negative representation of Indigenous people. So when we're looking at a text such as this, we need to consider the text type. So what type is it? Well, it is a website. It's a welcome page to um, Australia's Aboriginal Tourism website. And what is the purpose? of this website. I guess it's informative, it's trying to um, sell an experience as well, trying to obviously build up tourism, and it's informing um, its audience about different experiences that they can have. Who is the target audience? Well, I um, assume that the target audience is people that want to travel, people that want to learn more about Aboriginal history and culture, and I'm going to say that the target audience potentially is white, middle-aged um, people. You can see there that they've featured a white woman there, maybe in her 20s or 30s, who's learning to spearfish, uh, perhaps, perhaps from an Aboriginal man. So the target audience isn't Indigenous Australians. It's non-Indigenous Australians and maybe overseas tourists who want to um, be able to experience Aboriginal Australia. The other thing that we need to think about are language features. So what kind of words are being used on this um, text? Are they emotive, descriptive, factual? Are they positive or negative words? And how do those words position us to feel when we're viewing this text? And I would say that these words are quite um, positive and they're also descriptive, maybe emotive. So I've underlined ancient wisdom and local expertise. That is how they're selling Aboriginal tourism, okay, by ancient and local. They're positioning us to feel that this Aboriginal man here holding the spear is the expert and that we will be able to learn a lot about an ancient culture if we um, use this website and do some of the experiences there. Um, so the other thing we need to think about, and there's a couple more things, but when we're looking for clues in a text, we might consider the images. Now, this is something that we've done before when we've talked about um, our advertising campaign. We think about objects, position, colour, symbols, all of those different things that go into making up an image. So you can see that the objects here in the main part of this text is a white woman and um, an Aboriginal man standing in the water fishing, spear fishing, using a traditional spear. Interestingly, the woman is in the foreground and the Aboriginal man is behind her. A question why they position the object that way, considering that they're making the man seem like he is the expert in this situation. Um, the woman is also wearing white. White symbolises purity and innocence. Is that what they're trying to portray in this ad? That she is innocent and pure and just learning a new skill? Whereas the Aboriginal man is not wearing traditional dress, um, but not wearing anything formal. He's very casual, board shorts and a shirt there. Um, and his colours are much more earthy and um, muted tones. So symbols, we've got the kangaroo of Tourism Australia in the top corner there. So you can easily recognise that this is an Australian website. Um, anything else that we need to note here with our picture? Uh, 
it's positioned in a landscape that looks Australian, I suppose. There's the um, sea that they are standing in, and obviously the large um, spear is in the forefront of the image. So I guess we just um, understand that spears represent Aborigines. Is that what we're supposed to see in this image? So the image working with the words of ancient wisdom and local expertise gives us the feeling that the Aboriginals are the experts when it comes to spearfishing, I suppose. The other thing we need to do when we're looking for clues is the text structure. Um, so we're looking at the layout of information, the style of the font, the headings and the composition. Obviously the main picture at the top there is supposed to entice people to um, visit Australia and take part in Aboriginal tourism. And then we've got some other pictures down the bottom with some more information if they want to find out about destinations, experience or operator directory. Um, the style of font I think is quite casual. Okay, and it's kind of looks like somebody wrote it themselves, which makes it a bit more personal. So that is kind of how we look at all the clues in the text. So the next thing we need to do is talk about evaluating representations. So we can talk about how accurate or how positive a representation is by using a scale such as the one below. So is something positive or is it negative? Can we see it as realistic or is it unrealistic in the way it represents a certain group? And when I'm talking about that ad that I just was mentioning, I would say I'd put it over here. So the Aboriginal Tourism Campaign is a positive representation of Indigenous Australians, but I did move it a little bit to more more towards the unrealistic part of that scale because I'm questioning whether or not um, it is realistic that Aboriginal people still fish in that way um, and use spears and that sort of thing. So to me, I'm not sure it's particularly um, realistic, although it does paint the picture that the Indigenous people are experts. So that is a good thing. Okay, so when we're talking about evaluating and explaining representations, I've got some vocabulary here that gives you some positive and negative language that you could use in your responses when we're asking you to evaluate text. So if it was a positive representation, you could say it's breaking down barriers, that it's inspirational, that it's challenging the stereotypes, that it's transformative and it makes us think of changes in society's views that it's inclusive, entertaining, and cathartic, which means healing or liberating. Um, and then if it was negative, you might say, well, it's stereotypical. It's judgmental. It's a simplistic representation. It has a limited point of view that it is showing, that it's exploitive, which means unfair and unequal. You could say that it was insulting or manip manipulative, and that way it's calculating or controlling. So let's practice. Examine the two texts below and determine whether or not it's a positive or negative representation. So I found two texts here that actually talk about the same issue. And when we're looking at the two texts, we need to ask ourselves those questions. So the type of text, the author, the purpose, what is the target audience and what is the issue, who is being represented and how we position to feel. And we can also look at clues in the text, so language features, images, objects, positions, colours, styles, structure, okay, and come up with our own ideas. So you can see text one here is a political cartoon and it is showing um, an image of a father and his Aboriginal son brought home by the police. You'll have to sit down and talk to your son about personal responsibility. Yeah, righto. What's his name then? So you can see that this is a stereotyped. Um, so we were saying that that is a stereotyped political cartoon that is making us assume that all Aboriginal fathers are irresponsible. And that is contrasted with text two, which shows Jonathan Thurston and his daughter at the grand final in 2015. 
Now, this text is showing us that Jonathan Thurston is a responsible father.